Learn Abacus at Home, Step-by-Step -step Abacus Tutorials. So how do we add 3 plus 2? We don't have two beads in the ones column to add. How about 7 plus 5? Well, the 5 beads already down is touching the answer bar. How do we add another 5 in the ones column? It's quite obvious there's still a number of things that we need to learn before we can solve any number on the abacus. By the way, in case you're wondering, we use something called complementary numbers to solve these kind of questions. But for now, we're going to defer complementary numbers until the next lesson. In this lesson, however, we'll introduce our students to mind math and how we use what we've learned so far to visualize the abacus to do simple calculations in our head. If you've not seen some of the amazing mind math demonstrations, visit this link below to check out one of our students showcase their abilities. For your student to excel at mind math, instead of calculating the traditional way, you want them to visualize the abacus in their head. What that means is that they need to move their fingers like they're moving beads on an imaginary abacus and visualize the movement of the beads in their head. Once all the beads are moved, the student visualizes the beads that are left touching the answer bar to arrive at the answer. As students continue practicing this technique, they develop and sharpen this ability to visualize and easily calculate large string of numbers. Now this amazing and powerful capability not only helps them in math, but also improves their focus, their concentration, memory, their retention, which incidentally helps them not only in school, but also with other creative pursuits like music and art. Well, with that in mind, let's dive in. Let's solve 3 plus 1 minus 2 plus 1. 3 plus 1. What do you see touching the answer bar? I see a 4. Take away 2. Add 1. What's left touching the answer bar now? It's a 3. Let's do that again. Let's do 3 plus 1. Take away 2, add 1. The answer is 3. Well, let's do another one. Let's do 1 plus 2 minus 2 plus 3. So let's move 1 up with our thumb. Imagine we, we just moved 1 beat up. Plus 2. I see 3 now touching in the answer bar. Take away 2. You're left with a 1. Add 3. Answer is 4. Okay, let's do that again. 1 plus 2 minus 2 plus 3. Answer is 4. Well, so far, we did lower beads only. Now let's bring in the upper beads. Let's do 4 plus 5 minus 3 minus 1. 4 plus 5. I see a 9 now touching the answer bar. Take away a 3. Take away a 1. Answer is five okay let's do that again four plus five minus three minus one answer is five now let's put the abacus away for a minute and just visualize the abacus in our mind while moving our fingers to pretend that we're moving the beads now let's solve one plus two plus one minus three so now we don't have an abacus there in front of us. We're just going to imagine that we're moving beads in the ones column and uh, coming up with the answer. So here we go. 1 plus 2 plus 1 take away the 3. Answer is 1, right? So let's try that again. 1 plus 2. We see a 3 touching the answer bar in, in our mind. Plus 1. Now we've got a 4. We take away the 3. We're left with a 1. That's why the answer is 1. Let's do another one. Let's do 3 plus 1 minus 2 plus 1. So here we go. 3 plus 1. We see a 4 touching the answer bar. Take away the 2. We've got a 2 left. Add a 1. 3. Okay. Here we do that again. 3 plus 1 minus 2 plus 1. Answer is 3. Now let's bring in the upper beads. Let's do 5 plus 3 minus 1 minus 5. So 5 plus 3, we got 
8, take away the 1, take away the 5, you've got a 2 touching the answer bar. Let's do that again. 5 plus 3, take away 1, take away 5. The answer is 2. Now let's try another one with the upper beats. 3 plus 1 plus 5 minus the 4. We're left with the 5. Do that one again. 3 plus 1 plus 5 minus the 4. Answer is 5. Now there are several reasons why during mind math we ask students to move their fingers to mimic what they would do if they were moving the beads on a physical abacus. Two key reasons among them are that first, it maintains their focus and helps them better visualize. And secondly, as teachers, it demonstrates to us that a student is actually visualizing the beads and not taking shortcuts by solving using traditional math. If we don't develop this ability to visualize early in the program, students generally struggle as questions get harder. Now in any case, as the student continues to improve, visualizing just becomes second nature and they can stop using that finger movement during mind math. Uh, let's talk about worksheets really quick. If your student is five or six year old, focus only on the mind math worksheets with lower beads in this lesson. If your student is seven years or older, they can work on the mind math worksheets that contain both the upper beads and the lower beads. Now in all the lessons moving forward, part of the practice for the week will include mind math work along with the abacus work. The mind math worksheets, of course, will gradually continue to become more challenging each week. Now that's all in this lesson, and please, before you move to the next lesson, make sure you complete the mind math worksheets with this lesson. Well, thanks again for watching.